Um, so, hello. Uh, I will actually tell you a little bit about designing APIs uh, for uh, specifically mobile applications. That's my Twitter handle if you want to share any feedback. Uh, that would be great. And I work as a head of engineering at Polydea. And uh, this is a company, a software house, that develops mostly mobile applications for our clients. And we actually have a large spectrum of uh, different APIs. We usually actually uh, make some, uh, provide some uh, kind of consultancy or even build APIs or some kind of middleware to legacy backend systems. Um, yeah, and uh, why is it any different actually to build API for a mobile than just regular API? And I think Jakob uh, said yesterday, your HTTP-based API is not RESTful, couldn't agree more actually, and what I'm gonna tell you that it is good actually. Um, so, this is actually the world of uh, limitations, and everything uh, is a little bit different. So Hypermedia actually got uh, quite a buzz at this event, and uh, we all get the idea actually of linking resources and showing actions between them. Uh, so let's actually uh, take a look at what latency is, and. Um, for those of you who uh, have uh, actually no idea how uh, this works for application, uh, you can actually uh, think of latency as the moment uh, between when you ask for data to when you actually start getting that. So in the first case, uh, when you have a large amount of data, that's a pretty okay, right? That's only a small part of the whole request. But in the other case, um, that may be the crucial part. So actually, um, if you take a look at different connections and how actually a single ping works there, um, the most important parts for you would be uh, the average and standard deviation. Uh, so uh, the, the first one actually shows what is the most important case for you, and the other shows how far away are you from average in average? And, well, why would you even care about 2G, right? Everyone uh, uses at least 3G and uh, most of the cases, LT connection, uh, which actually is called 4G now. And, well, it's not entirely true. It depends uh, where your clients are and who is going to use your mobile application. And actually, it's great Cisco shares that kind of information. And last year, 4G uh, was about 3% of world market. Um, and actually, if you take a look at the top, so almost two third goes for 2G connection. That's the worldwide. Um, so you have to deal with that. And well, the most obvious one actually is to merge responses, uh, not to um, provide entities the way that you actually hold that in your backend um, and serve, the, serve it that way, but focus about what will be actually uh, displayed in mobile application and then actually send only that and nothing else in that uh, single response. Um, well, expansion is actually a very nice mechanism for you to join those two worlds. You can still have a pretty nice API and uh, entities where they should be, and this solves another case. In the first case, you actually specifically need to know what the application will be. So if another team in your company is working on that, uh, or actually you know the team that is, uh, creating the mobile application, then you can uh, prepare um, a specific API. If you don't know who that is, that you actually open your API and um, hope for someone to integrate with that, it's really a good mechanism to leave them this field to, to decide what they want to um, get and even nest fields so they can actually pull something else from a set entity. 
And the most important part, actually, everyone needs to um, make sure that the API supports is to uh, keep the connection alive. And if you wonder, actually, whether mobile clients do support that, all of the major platforms do, out of the box. So even if developers uh, won't think about that, it's the default. And if you take away the hypermedia and don't document um, API in that case, because hypermedia is probably the best uh, way to discover the API, you really need to provide tools. But fortunately, there are a couple of tools even presented today, like API Swagger, to describe that API. Another one is throughput. Um, and there is a great, uh, I think every three months uh, comes out a report from Akamai, a really big CDN. Um, and I've aggregated that map, uh, that data into a map. And when I <coughs> actually start over, I need to ask my client, where will the users be potentially, right? If it's in Poland, then um, it's pretty OK to uh, focus only on those numbers. It's, if it's worldwide, then we have to take a look at the minimal throughput. Um, so how to deal with that? Um, of course, just like in uh, the last case, instead of just sending entities uh, in the way how you understand them in the backend or in your system, um, then you can actually focus only on what's being displayed. And this is actually quite popular, that you are developing API to be used in the mobile browser. And then you reuse this, the same API for the mobile application. And there is just not enough place to present all of that data in the mobile application. People um, only have to see what is um, the minimal subset of, uh, of that. Um, expansion, again, you can uh, let the developer decide um, what he actually wants to present. There, so uh, it can work also on uh, bigger collections, just like in this case. Uh, the problem with expansion is there is, there is uh, probably no good tooling at this moment. Last time I've checked, none of the big frameworks supported that out of the uh, box. So you need to actually hard code that whenever uh, users want to nest data or limit that. You have to check those, whether those fields are valid. Um, and if someone no wants nested entities, then you're actually going to have to make some kind of um, complex querying for that. Um, very important part, actually, is to compress data and um, not only a few APIs actually support GZIP. And this is actually something that is supported uh, in platforms, not out of the box. Um, but uh, it works with uh, just uh, with clients provided by system. And for big uh, messages, actually, you can go up to 90% down on the message size just by applying GZIP. And the only reason when you don't want to use gzip uh, is uh, when you have a lot of endpoints that provide a very small amount of data. Then it can actually grow, and it will cost you additional computation time. Right, so the toolbox um, on mobile is really primitive, even in those times. Uh, that's a simple use case that you can actually want uh, to query two different services and uh, merge the response. Uh, in the same time, if you would like to do that in uh, iOS, well, we can uh, quickly go through the process. You have to register a single task that uh, will hit one of the endpoints and another for another endpoint. And the third one that will actually wait for them to finish, um, present data or, and merge them, and all of other crazy thing going on dedicated to system. This is quite better on Android because I've used a really cool uh, future library for that. So this is at least readable in some kind of way. And 
if you want to test that, whether that code works or not, it sucks because this is actually the most popular tool for a uh, plugin for Android that, uh, as, as author mentioned, he has no longer uh, any strength to, to, to maintain because Google is uh, changing this API for building uh, Android projects too often. Um, we have actually uh, dropped support for our plugin lately as well. We're just keeping always green project. All right, so you have actually developed that, um, maybe even tested. There was a bug, and you want to fix that. And what happens if you want to deploy that? Well, it can go from hours to weeks, as uh, in case of uh, iOS to app market. Um, but what you have to remember, actually, it can take up to even weeks or more for clients to update your application. It's not the first thing they want to do in the morning. They just want to check their email. As for the backend, well, you all know that probably. This is really, right? Uh, this this the same sample written in Groovy, and it doesn't scroll, actually, even if you want to. You can uh, use uh, parallel libraries to do that, and if it doesn't, isn't robust enough, then you can spread that into several machines. Uh, you can do everything, and uh, you can just update several or even a couple hundred times a day. Um, well, this is the actually most uh, difficult part because we all we are violate, violating REST here. So, if you want to uh, say that one user will be following another, you should actually think about entities. So, this entity is uh, following a, a relation uh, between one user and another. And um, what we do most of the cases is just we're using verbs for that. We're uh, keeping it at c as close as possible to actions that actually happen on a, uh, in the application. So if someone hits a button, um, then we try the endpoint to be as close to that, to get uh, as much logic as possible from the device to the backend. Right. Uh, well, paging actually um, has a completely different purpose than in web application. It's not only for ser serving small amount of data. It's about actually loading a lot of data stored that locally in the application. Um, so you actually have to rethink that. And if someone ge uh, gets deleted, he will not get that whenever he refreshed that page because uh, application will store that locally. So just don't make developer think about that use some kind of uh, timestamp to um, actually mark a place in that collection that someone is loading. He'll be just uh, back for another page in a second. And well, actually, most of collections will not uh, use paging at all. If you have, I don't know, 100 re uh, elements in that collection, or maybe 10,000 collections, that if you, if you will actually gzip them, that will take less than a one megabyte. You can actually do that in just one request for that. And well, talk is cheap, so this is the actual uh, case study. Um, there was a legacy API used by mobile application that we were building, and then there was a lot, a lot of uh, complaints. And we have uh, actually rebuilt the API, and the overall, there were 36. Um, different endpoints. So it we went down to 20, so it means that 16 of them were used in the same context that something else did. So we've merged that. And if you go through the whole application, to, uh, do the full cycle, you used to do 86 calls. Now we went to 20, so it's still one call for one page, and generally went down by 84% of uh, data at all being sent to the device. And well, you can actually see how that works. You have two applications. On the right, uh, this is the one using new API, and it will wait for the other application. At the login stage, it used to get a lot of configuration uh, data and uh, initial stuff. So it, it took only five seconds. Uh, in this one. This is the same version of application. It did, this was the offline tutorial. It went really fast. And now it was the actually 
uh, most important part. Uh, this is the main dashboard that loads a lot of information here, and it used to get uh, source information and used to aggregate that locally. We changed that to get exactly the data that will be displayed. So you can uh, see what what actually it, uh, it means to an end user to apply all of those things in the real world, right? How different the user experience is just using the application. And the last part, actually, you don't have to um, destroy your beautiful API platform to do that. You can actually keep this open for the developers. What we've done in this case, actually, we've created a facade only for mobiles. So this is it. I hope you liked that. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Wojciech. Very good. Here's a gift from us, Nordic APIs. Thank you.